Yeah, hello. I want to talk uh, with you today about predictive technologies. Are they our next unwelcome house guest? What do you think? Or will they uh, help us build a green energy system and a, uh, a future-proofed energy system for our environment? Well, what are predictive uh, technologies? Obviously, we all heard about it and we all use it literally every day. Already when we use the weather forecast, that's prediction. So if we use our umbrella or if we need a jacket, that's already prediction. But for many prediction technologies that surround us already, we don't even know, or at least we don't think of it that way. Of course, it's the weather, but also recommender systems. So Amazon, Spotify, these are the typical ones, Netflix, but also job algorithms. So when I search for a new job, the job center might already predict if it's worth to invest in you or not. So you see here, there are many problematic fields in there, but also huge advantages, especially for climate change. And that's what we want to talk about uh, today, <coughs> about the bright and also the dark sides of it, and also how little data you actually need uh, to do this, to predict you your surroundings, and much more. And where are the data coming from? So by law in Europe, we are required to get smart meters in Europe so that we get the data of our energy consumption monitored. They can automatically read out the energy consumption we have. Um, and so we will produce in the future a lot of data where we can do bad or nice stuff with it. And climate change, um, it's, it's, uh, it's coming and it's a big problem. So one of the big problems there is the energy system. Yeah, so we have really to weigh the costs and the bene uh, benefits of especially these smart metering, so our electricity data, because it can be public, not public, it's definitely out there. So we have to work with it. Yeah. So what is the benefit if we have this data and if we do a prediction of our energy systems? So we can optimize our energy production so we, that we don't produce too much energy. We know exactly in different areas how much energy will be used there, how much energy will be produced in another area. So we can optimize the energy tra uh, transport system and we can optimize the production of renewable energy. So when we can predict the weather, how much wind we will get, how much uh, sunshine we will get, and we can predict the energy use we have, we can combine this together and try to bring the energy consumption where we have this green and renewable energy available for us. Everything comes with a cost obviously. And the costs to actually uh, be efficient in using these energies are variable or flexible tariffs. Uh, what does it mean? It's not flexible for us, unfortunately. It just means that the cost or the price of the electricity is more flexible to us, which is useful if you can stay at home and say, oh yeah, now it's a lot of sunshine, I'm using my washing machine now. But it's really, really bad if you're already challenged it uh, with, with, fin um, with, fin um, with your finances, for example. Especially working poor people have a problem because they can't say, well, I wait now for my laundry. No, I need it tomorrow in the morning so I can go to work. And for these people, it can be actually worse. And also, I mean, now you can say, well, then buy a washing machine that actually tells you when to use it best. Well, the investment costs, especially for financially challenged people, might not fit that requirement. So, mm, bad things can happen. Yep, but on the other side, if we have this, all these appliances um, and we have the data, we can predict these appliances. We can say, because we have the data in 15 minutes intervals, we can say, at this time you have used your washing machine. You have an old washing machine, where um, your heating element is, has already a very poor quality. So it can predict, okay, if you buy now a new washing machine, which will 
use the communication with the smart grid to say, okay, I put my, my um, stuff in there. I say start whenever there is a good time for the grid to wash my um, laundry. And we can calculate how long will it take to get back the money from the energy savings you will have with this new machine. We can do gamification uh, things with that. So you can look at, oh, last week I have used this much energy. This week I'm better. Why I'm better? Uh, what have I changed? How is my friends are doing? How is my neighbors are doing? And we can see how is it globally doing? Am I, uh, uh, do I save energy or am I spending too much energy? Or also in medicine for elderly assisted living, we can use this to keep people longer at home, especially elderly people, they have a very specific uh, plan of a day. So we can predict when they normally turn on their uh, coffee machine, when they do their laundry, when they're uh, cooking their meals. So we can predict if they don't uh, turn on their, washing uh, their coffee machine in the morning. Has there happened something? Should we call them? And we don't need a lot of investment to build apartments which can support this. And for example, if we say the person starts to switch on the lights more and more in the night, that could mean that he's going to the toilet because he is um, developing uh, some new disease and should go in for treatment. On the other hand, we have the smart grid. So we need to build a grid that can communicate with each other, the, the devices can communicate with each other. But if we can predict the energy consumption there, we need less infrastructure. We need less uh, building of high voltage power lines going through the countryside. We can try to produce the energy we need um, with renewable energy at the place where it is consumed. And we can try to, uh, to have not that much non-renewable energy used in our system. Again, <laughs> the costs. <laughs> well, uh, yes, we can really be more efficient and really start saving a lot of energy, but therefore we have, again, to invest a lot, Primar uh, primarily. So many countries in the world have to rebuild their entire power grid system to actually make it happen. And because of the communication devices that you formerly didn't need, uh, you have also higher maintenance costs. But that even makes the risk of attacks and frauds even higher, and also the risk of failures. Just uh, to have one example at least, 2016 in the Ukraine, there was a cyber attack. And 200,000, 205 people sit, uh, sit in the dark for three hours. Well, that was actually not too bad, but that is just the start and you can do it with the worldwide access. So we need really security and security regulations to have um, a secure power grid. And also when he said gamification and stuff and when our neighbors know what we consume, well, when the neighbors knew when we, what we consume, well, then also companies do, unfortunately. And they um, normally don't use it to make our lives better, but to make more profit. So they will use more recommender systems. And already uh, in the uh, 2020s, 35% of Amazon's sales just come from their recommending us stuff and also additional target marketing over Google etc etc and supervision of the customer so they know when you're pregnant before you do just on your shopping list not joking that is happening so um, this could also result in a typical turbo capitalism which means more energy more cheap labor more garbage more shipping which results into the same again and again and again. Yeah, but on the other side, we can also uh, encourage or enforce um, companies to save energy. We can monitor their consumption of energy and compare this to other um, companies in their field or companies in other regions. And with this comparison, we can try to give them a, a benefit to be more efficient and to have like a green sticker for their products that they say, okay, we are using 
mainly green energy. We are trying to save energy. We try to shift our production cycles to times when there is green energy available and we don't use um, non-renewable energy. And this can also be used as an innovation driver for the governments to invest into these areas, to bring new um, energy saving technologies into companies where there is a lot of energy used and therefore can be a lot of energy saved in these areas. Again, costs, we were at the uh, companies already, but it can get worse, especially in these times where home office becomes more and more of a thing. The monitoring of your efficiency at home or also in the office can be done with your energy data, or at least in uh, some professions. And, well, I don't like to be monitored that much. So, and also not only efficiency monitoring, but also resource monitoring. So, again, we have to tell the companies that they're not allowed to do it. But also, not just as, a, of course, as an employee. I was already at a customer, but as a customer, it can be time-based pricing, not only for your electricity, but for everything, which, again, financially challenged people have m um, even a bigger problem with that. Consumer scoring, we know it from Germany, when you want to rent a flat, they know already a lot about you. I don't like if they know even more about me. And also remote energy control. Thing is, it is a possibility that the electricity company, and um, you have forgotten to pay once, no electricity anymore. And these are just the criminal companies. <laughs> so they are criminals. When your neighbor knows how much energy you use, then also other people in the World Wide Web. Uh, and also uh, near around you. So if you don't use energy because you're on holiday, something can just come for a short visit, maybe. So uh, And also ransomware. It could actually uh, be a problem for uh, the utility provider. That happened in Michigan were a week down, water and electricity, not that good. Um, and you can't be even a criminal yourself anymore. Why? Because you see in the data when you have like a 40 square meter flat, that happens in my research actually, uh, and you see like everybody's like have the same kind of amount of energy usage. And then there are two people just with 3000 kilowatt hours more than everybody else. Two reasons for that, Mariana operations or a really, really cool server system. <laughs> but it, will, it is also used already for policing, so for uh, um, prediction policing in Ohio. And there they find the Mariana operations. So the future, yes, um, it can be bad by behavioral analysis, prediction, enhancements, and also this policy. And we have to be aware of that. And it can always be worse. These were just outliners. But can it be better? For sure, yeah, it can be better. Um, but we have to work together to bring it to a better uh, system. And what we need for that is we need to have awareness about it. We need to know what is to uh, be done with our data. And we need legislation for all this data. How can it be used? How should it be used? And what uh, can be predicted and what should not be predicted with all this data? So yeah, all in all together, it's our, responsible, uh, our responsibility to also demand for it, to demand for legislation that this, and, uh, that this prediction technology can be used actually uh, to uh, challenge uh, the climate change and to make things better and not worse, not for us privately, not for the companies and so on and so on. And yeah, legislation will make the difference. It will be key and we are there for demanding it. And I hope we uh, both could give you an insight and yeah, feel free to ask any questions afterwards. Thanks yep. a lot. Thank you.